Very good morning to you. Well, good morning. Lovely to see you, but I'm afraid I am going to be the voice of travel doom. I've been <laughs> racing around uh, the capital oh, today, seeing Simon. where there's some um, problems and pretty much anywhere actually across the UK. If you want to tell me a place, I'll tell you how bad so, the so, travel is. So I saw you yesterday standing outside yet another station. Yes. And we did, on Talk Today yesterday, we talked about the fact that we had that problem with Eurostar, or Eurotunnel, mm. Eurostar. That was Friday, Thursday, wasn't it? Uh, Thursday or Friday. That, that was Friday. Yeah, uh, we um, had the problem on Thursday, but it was still it was still running on and Friday it still is today. Yeah, and that was uh, that was Euro Tunnel, and that affected Eurostar and uh, Le Chateau. Yeah. And then, and then on top of that, then we had King's Cross uh, in some what of a meltdown. We've uh, got engineering work. Coast, Tell us more. Well, okay, uh, so absolutely. Absolutely, as you say, we've had some really bad days and Eurostar, there's still people who were true to, due to travel oh. on Thursday still trying to get away. Eurostar no. is saying that you could have your train delayed by an hour and that's because they can't physically get enough people through the uh, uh, the border checks because of, um, uh, dare I say it... Um, Don't you start. Don't I won't, start, I won't. Simon. But, but this is what's happening. It's also reflected actually at Dover where we've got 90-minute yeah. queues to um, get through French uh, we'll get more people in then yeah. to, to, to process them. Uh, well, um, and <laughs> anyway, th so that is all happening. But on top of that, we are now seeing mass cancellations of trains across the country. This is really significant because London Paddington, where I've just come back down from, London King's Cross, they're both going to be closed tomorrow. So everything <gasps> needs to be working. And, and what, we've got what, last minute uh, cancellations. Waterloo's doing all right. Last minute cancellations on Great Western Railway to to South Wales, to the west of England, oh. and crucially, Avanti West Coast. Uh, they have cancelled so far 24 intercity trains today. Why is today. that a staffing issue? Uh, yep, they can't get the staff. So, um, so, so uh, this is disgusting and it's disgraceful, actually. Yeah, and, and it gets even worse. Tomorrow, northern trains, they're just saying, a whole load of lines, do not travel. We won't be able they to run any trains. They have sold tickets for families, for friends. Well, they knew the market. They knew the the bulge would happen at this time of year, as it always does. Why haven't they planned for this? Uh, well, they can't plan for it because the rail industry appears to be in a spiral of decline. Mm. Um, you have got, effectively, uh, a combination of ludicrously antiquated working agreements so that, for instance, on Northern, the reason they've, they've cancelled loads of trains on the western side of the Pennines mm -hmm. is because some of their staff don't have Sunday in a working week. I know. So therefore, it's you know Sunday's an overtime day. If it's Christmas Eve, you're probably going to say, actually, I don't fancy it. Thanks very Why much. Why wasn't I'll stay this all thrashed out? TV. You and know, so, when so, they were striking. Well, they are trying to sort it out, but of course that's uh, no, part, part of. Well, okay, it's part well, of the Well, they're going to go driverless so. trains then, aren't they? They're well, going to lose out. I mean, you're, you're right. Greg Smith, the Tory MP and members of the Commons uh, Transport Select Committee, said train operating companies cannot get away with this every year, blaming the weather for the appalling service. Yeah. Bad weather at this time of the year is not unusual. Oh, also, uh, uh, but also closing stations. Who, who makes this stuff up? Well, it, it, we, we are in a spiral of decline. There is extremely toxic uh, industrial relations mm. between yeah, train drivers mm -hmm. and the government. Mm -hmm. um, where they've been in dispute for the last year yeah. and a half, which is why nobody can plan a, a trip more than two weeks ahead because you don't know when the next train driver's strike will be. And if you have allowed um, this situation to prevail, mm -hmm. whereby on a Sunday... You can't rely on anybody working. Perfectly reasonable. You, 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 if you're, you it's not part of your working week, <laughs> mm. and you don't want to do some overtime. That's fine. Mm. Nobody has a problem with that. But they have uh, managed to continue with this, and then the government comes along and says, "Ah, oh, here we are. Four point nine percent fare increase. Aren't we good to you?" And the ludicrous thing is that. Apart from anything else, putting up fares 5% oh, yeah, when the services are collapsing mm. is pretty bad. But on top of that, it's the wrong answer, or it's the, the answer to the wrong question. It's not, do we put up fares by 3, 4, 5, 6, 7%? No, you completely reform fares as you've been promising to do for the last 13 years 
and the Labour government before that was promising to do, and you haven't done it because it seems to be too so difficult. So I've got two two points. Why were the French striking that caused ah, the? Ah, okay, yeah. This was this was absolutely horrible. So that's what caused the the, the, the cancellation yeah, for okay. Eurostar on Thursday. And th th this was unspeakable, I thought, um, because it, it it was clearly aimed at British mm. travellers because the vast majority of people on Eurostar mm -hmm. and on Euro Tunnel shuttles mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. are British. They just decided, OK, uh, Thursday, um, we want we would like some extra money, thank you. Um, and we, we want a bonus. And the company said, all right, you can have a thousand euros, so uh, <laughs> 850 quid or something. Yeah, yeah. How very, very nice. But unfortunately, they said, no, that's not enough. We're going for lunch. And they took the rest of the day off. The channel tunnel closed. It's just extraordinary. That means it's that's... Yeah. It, it is extraordinary, and and when you, I mean, I agree with you. I think the railways are broken, completely yeah. broken. And sorry, David, but the the other thing I wanted to oh, bring yeah, in sorry. here is why on earth, when you go to Italy, the real work, the real trains work perfectly well. Why can't we replicate a system like that here? Uh, because we have decided as a nation that we don't want to have a high-speed rail network, as they've been putting in in Italy. We don't want proper competition between train operators. And to be fair, I mean, if you uh, it is. It normally works pretty well, but in Italy, in Spain, in Germany, you do get some really serious problems. Not least in Italy, because yeah, if it, if it's a uh, state run still though, the railways in Italy. Oh no, no, no! You've got some state run. And, they and actually, then you've got some privatised. Uh, and, and then the, you've got, and, and they're properly in competition. So, so, so. can I just, ask, I mean, let's just, let, so that here are the facts on this. Mm -hmm. So, so you're right in terms of that as left strike. The offer is four percent plus four percent. That brings them to sixty-five thousand yeah. pounds for a thirty-five hour, sixty-five grand. A lot of for, money for the thirty-five hour, four day, four day a week, plus changes to working practices, which is part of that Sunday working. Now. The, the government will also say, well, we have spent 13... It costs 13 billion quid a day mm. to subsidise the railways in this country. They were bailed out 16 13 billion, billion a day? Allegedly. No, that, that, well, or is that million? It must be million. But, but the point is, the railway system is broken. Oh, yes. And, and, and so for me, the issue I have is how do you, does competition work when you have train operators but on one stretch of railway? I don't really yeah. understand how oh, that no, works. But we, we invented it and that was Did what... Did Germany not own a portion of the net of the high speed HS2 from uh, uh, Old Oak? into Paddington or something? No, not as far as I know. No, so anyway, that's gone, hasn't uh, it, now? Uh, <laughs> he scrapped that. Uh, well, everything is being scrapped. So it, it is perfectly... So, so we actually showed the way in the UK, and every European country is doing this. You have the infrastructure operator, in the case of the UK, that's network rail, and then you have train companies competing on it. And it does work. If you look at the East Coast Main Line, uh -huh. you've got not just LNER, national, nationalised yeah. company, doing pretty well. You've got LUMO, which is basically just a kind of a Ryanair operation right. between um, Edinburgh, Newcastle and London. You've then got Grand Central, who are doing really good things, connecting parts of Yorkshire and North East England, which wouldn't otherwise have direct trains. And then Hull trains. And Hull, as a town, just city, just thought, OK, we, we don't have enough trains here, we'll have our own train operator. That is working really well. And, and what differentiates those? Is it a price differential or is it a, a, an offering differential? Uh, uh, well, well it, it's everything. And it's great to have four, four different operators on the same line because you can think, OK, LNER, lots of trains, reliable service, mm. nice people. Yeah. If anything goes wrong, I know I'll be looked after. The, the website's great yeah, as well. Yeah. Lumo, you're thinking, company. I'm going to get between London and, and Edinburgh. Um, I don't know if I'm going to fly and get a cheap ticket there or if I'm going to get the train. Um, Hull Trains is just, you want to go to Hull? That's the only <laughs> sensible way to do it. And Grand Central is, yeah. It does what it says in the tin. Uh, Sunderland and, and, and Hartlepool and places and various places in, um, in, in uh, West Yorkshire, you can get there and you couldn't get there before. So it, it really opens up. So, so for me, the dichotomy here is the government is pushing everyone out of cars, the green agenda, mm -hmm. all this yeah. kind of stuff. So really, we should be going by railway. Oh, no, but, but the government hates railways. Um, Rishi Sunak has been described by senior rail figures as the most anti-rail Prime Minister, we have. Is that ever because had. he doesn't need to travel by rail? Exactly. Yeah. So, so um, why would I? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm in London. Why would I catch a train to Southampton? That's going to take over an hour. 
um, so he gets his helicopter instead. Mm. Um, and that so, so and, and, and when you look at this, uh, we've just heard that uh, rail fares will also be going up yeah. next year by 5%. The regulated rail fares will increase yeah. to, uh, by 4.9%. Now, they include season tickets on most commuter journeys, some off-peak return tickets on long-distance routes, flexible tickets for travel around major cities. The government is spinning this by saying, oh, it's much lower than yeah. in Scotland, where it's 8.7%. I was just but, about to bring in yeah. Scott Feel there because it's horrendously but, expensive and the SNB have killed. But, but you see, as a commuter, if you, you, you're not getting a service. Everyone's always on strike. The railways aren't that reliable, and now they're going up again. Yeah, OK, well, let's just pick up ScotRail. They have done something innov innovative, which is saying, um, and this is yet, yet more Scottish taxpayers' money being poured into it, um, they've said we're going to abolish as a trial peak fares so actually for a lot of journeys the cost oh that the, that cost will be absorbed yeah well, you know anyway simon you uh, know that uh but, but Yusuf um, doesn't do anything for nothing and let alone anything for the people of scotland well there we are that that's a <laughs> discussion that's the which he's got on other track, people Scott may have a share different yeah. views but so uh, so uh it's it's just a tragedy for those of us who rely entirely on trains well to it get does and as a parent of children at universities in mm. university towns of newcastle and leeds I'd much prefer them to get on a train to come home than a coach. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, well, no, just... don't knock the coaches. They're fantastic. The reason you will be able to travel around more of uh, the UK this weekend, uh, sorry, this, this Christmas, yeah, and, no. and is because, it's because of the trains. It's because of the trains, exactly. Flixbus, Flix um, Megabus, they're doing great stuff. Fantastic. Talkers, I, don't, I can't say I'm familiar with Flixbus or oh, okay, the Megabus. Are, Tell me more. Oh, OK, so National Express has been going since the dawn of time. Mm -hmm. Indeed, I know oh, that. Oh, very good, yep, OK. Megabus, um, part of the Stagecoach organisation, Yep. In, in Scotland, Scooters, yep. um, that uh, set up probably 15, 20 years ago, and it's fantastic. It's just really straightforward. Intercity, mm -hmm. it, it just goes from London to Manchester. You're not going to be messing around stopping in 17 villages along the way like National Express might. Flixbus, and and, and again, is that Ryanair more of a Ryanair offering? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, the buses are the same. You, you've got leisure, leather seats. You've got yep. somewhere to plug your laptop in. You've got Wi-Fi. Yep. Um, you can, yeah, the phone's going to work. And then Flix bus is a German company which has got a lot of UK, US um, private equity money coming in and they've just got the big green buses but they're in the same game as um, everybody else mm -hmm. and it's fantastic to have all this competition and good reliable services that all but the way through Christmas. But it just takes so much time. Yeah but, but do you want to get there and know that you're going to get there or do you want to just say okay mm. well I'll catch the um, 11 o'clock to Lincoln today from London King's Cross. Oh no you won't because we haven't got anybody. So no, so, so um just just in terms of of this holiday for those people who are tra trying to travel by rail what's your advice okay if you are traveling today and um then just try and get your journey done earlier because um train cancellations are building up uh if you're thinking of traveling tomorrow be very careful again start as early as you can and make sure that you're not trying to use one of the lines which is closed like the intercity oh. lines out of london king's cross or london paddington and that you will be able to complete your journey, bearing in mind that on Christmas Eve, services wind, wind down from sort of mid-afternoon onwards. No trains at all on Christmas Day, very, very few on Boxing Day, which is why the marvellous bus companies step in. Brilliant. And then um, the ferries, I saw Dover very yeah, busy Dover yesterday. Dover is going to be very busy again today, um, not least because there aren't any ferry crossings on Christmas Day, um, so just allow plenty of time for that. And the standard thing is, you, you sit in a queue, you finally get to the, the Frontier Post, you get processed through, you've missed your ferry, but they just put you on the next available yeah. one on that line. So so you will get I like a ferry, I have to say. I, oh, yeah. I, I Do you not it. get seasick? Do you have no, sea legs? No, 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 they're OK. I just really like the fact you can get up and walk around and do all sorts of mm. things. I always like that Felix Toad to Zeebrugge, um, or Zeebrugge, um, that, that room, which Ooh, I did as a child. Yeah, I know. Well, mm. they, they, But unfortunately, that is one of the many, many, many ferry links which has um, uh, not survived the test of time. You used to be able to get three times a day from Great Yarmouth to Schwingenen in the <laughs> Netherlands. Can you imagine? Um, anyway, Sounds great. Yeah, but you can't anymore. Oh. Um, so and, and then um, planes? Do planes? Okay? Should we okay, finish right. with planes? Okay, fantastic. So, busiest day of the winter in Manchester in Stansted Airport. Top two of our top four airports. The other two 
um, big, biggest airports, London Heathrow and London Gatwick, likely to have problems with high winds, reducing the flow rate. These are the busiest two runway and busiest single runway airports in the world. British Airways has already cancelled 16 flights oh, today. Goodness um, me. Uh, expect delays to build up. Um, loads of people came into Manchester in the early hours of the morning because their flights were you know, picked up delays all during the day. And if you are waiting for somebody who was due in at um, uh, five past six this morning from Qatar, well, they are in Qatar. The plane took off last night from Doha, flew to northern Iraq and then went back. I assume some kind of technical issue. So those people are probably going to be routed oh. through random European places like Budapest and Frankfurt, and, Frankfurt and, yeah. and eventually they will get to Manchester but um, that's a bit of stress you can really do. And, and finally, are you travelling for Christmas? No, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly... travelling from station to station. Well, very sadly... <laughs> a TV station station. I, I've been covering um, travel at Christmas since shortly after the uh, nativity and um, <laughs> it's just every year there's something that happens. French going on strike, um, planes getting technical problems. It, uh, it's not as bad as five years ago, the Gatwick drone... If you remember that, a thousand flights yes, cancelled. Yes, I was there. Yeah. We, we, our holiday was cancelled as a result of that. Exactly. And nothing, no fallout from the Icelandic volcano then? No, no that, that's bubbling away, but it was okay. all going to be fine.